Okay, so this really is not the video that I thought I would be making here, because last night, when I went to bed, I was like, okay, in the 3 p.m. time slot, PST by the way, I wanted to talk about Jakob Vrana. Detroit Red Wings forward who had just recently come back from the NHL's player assistance program and whose time with the Grand Rapids Griffins in the AHL was going to be extended. I wanted to make a video talking about that process, how he had been since showing back up in Grand Rapids, his entire development so far, and what he could be in the future. And that was going to be the video, you know? Just make a nice update, housekeeping sort of video, because we hadn't talked about Verona in a while. We haven't made too many videos about him because he was going through the entire assistance program. But instead, we get ourselves the news earlier today that Vrana, the same guy I wanted to make that video about, has been placed on waivers. And this was a very intriguing move for the Red Wings and Steve Eiserman, mostly because for the past little while, we always kind of knew they needed to waive somebody. They've got Robbie Fabry coming back, and as a result, somebody was going to have to go. Whether that would have been the goaltender Magnus Helberg, who had been called up and subsequently claimed by every other team under the sun, pretty much. He also had Adam Ernie that was in there, too. Maybe a defenseman like Lindstrom, for example. But instead, it's Jakob Vrana, the guy who had played three games with the Griffins in his little stint and who had zero points in that span. He also was a minus five, as unfortunate as it is. Now, we had ourselves quotes from Derek Lalonde. This is an article on Detroit Hockey Now by Kevin Allen from yesterday, talking about how Verona will stay a bit longer with Grand Rapids, and here's the quote from the Red Wings head coach. Jakob is going to use the full two weeks, which I think is good. I think he felt good about his last game. He also said that the process of Verona going down to Grand Rapids in the first place is ultimately what Steve put on him. How it was what he wanted to do, and it's a credit to Steve that he wanted to get some more touches that way. Now, the rest of this article individually goes over how Vrana had already played two games with the Wings in this season. He had two points in those games before leaving the team in mid-October to go to the NHL's player assistance program. And so the news of him going through the program, finishing things up, coming back with the team at the start of December, conditioning for a little bit, and then going down to the AHL, playing a little bit over there, getting an extension on his conditioning stint, only to have him get waived officially... It's a really intriguing sort of process here, and I don't want to go out there and say that there's anything conspiracy going on, but, I mean, it's difficult to go out there and understand why this was the player the Red Wings wanted to do this with. Vrana was the main piece coming back in the Anthony Mantha trade, and this is a guy that realistically has a chance at being a consistent 30-goal year-in, year-out guy for Detroit, especially last season. The guy was at half a goal a game. He's had a very limited showcase with the Red Wings over the past two, three seasons now. This is his third season in which he is a part of the Wings, but in the limited sample that he's had, I mean, look at this. Two games played plus 26 games played, so 28 plus 11. That's 39 games played in this span. The guy has... What is that, 22 goals in 39 games? That's really not bad, and he's been performing like this ever since getting acquired in 2021. He's a talented hockey player when he's in the lineup and when he's fully up to speed, which is why we all kind of thought that the 5.25 AAV dollar extension for three years was a pretty good bargain for what he provided, especially since he's only 26 years old. Like, this is a young-ish guy who's got a boatload of goal-scoring potential into the future. And so now... He's on waivers. Any team in the NHL can claim this guy for free, although the five point something million dollars AAV definitely does prohibit some other teams from making this acquisition. There are teams at the bottom of the NHL that have the opportunity to do something like this should they decide, hey, this guy's free in the market. Let's go out there and give a claim. Take a look at Cap Friendly right now. The Arizona Coyotes have $32 million in cap space. The Sabres have 31. The Ducks, 25. Chicago has 10. Minnesota has 6. There are teams that can claim this guy for absolutely nothing and have no problems about it and maybe try to trade him off at the deadline or something because he is an expiring deal in order to maximize their own capital that way. And at the end of the day, if you lose out on the main piece that you got in the Mantha trade for free, that would be an absolute travesty, and I don't really know if Steve Eiserman is the type of guy to commit tragedies like that. And so... There's a part of me that's kind of thinking, okay, there has to be some external thing going on here, right? Either Steve Eiserman has a plan, either he knows that Vrana is going to clear, or he's putting him on waivers with the intention of getting rid of the guy because of something else that I don't even want to think about but can be a possibility, albeit probably the most undesired one. There are a lot of things to consider. But I think if you wanted to rationalize it mostly from the perspective of Vrana and development— 
If you're Steve Eiserman and you have some sort of an inkling that Verona is not going to get claimed, sending him down to Grand Rapids allows him to be in that organization, stick around for a while beyond two weeks, and play even longer. If his time with the NHL Player Assistance Program has really gotten him out of shape, then hey, sending him down to the AHL, having him clear waivers, and allowing him to stay beyond two weeks probably isn't that bad of a move, especially if it helps him get back up to speed in an appropriate way. It's just... The means of that being accomplished is very questionable at best, and of course this is only one possibility out of the many that exist as to why this is even occurring in the first place. And so, I guess we just gotta wait until tomorrow, see what happens if a team goes out there and actually puts in a claim on Verana, because, I mean, if there was already news that he needs to extend in the AHL, I don't know if any GM is gonna look at that and say, oh, prime asset, let's go ahead and take him for free because he's there and he's good and he's ready to go. Because, I mean, look, Derek Lalonde said a few days ago he's not ready, he's going to be sticking around in the AHL. So, maybe that does act as some sort of a barrier, you know, a little bit of a question mark as to whether or not another team should go out there and claim this guy. But at the end of the day, if somebody does, then I wouldn't be too surprised to see why. I mean, Vrana, as we said, in his prime, he could be a 35 to 40 goal scorer on any team. And playing with a guy like Jack Hughes, for example, in New Jersey, you take a look at that team. They've got $6.4 million on LTIR cap space. Why? Well, because they've got Jonathan Bernier and Andre Pilat both on the LTIR. I mean, if you take Vrana, cut and paste him over on a New Jersey with Jack Hughes... That's a deal that I think is really, really good. Not to mention the Washington Capitals fans clamoring and saying that they should get this guy back. They've got $4.6 million in LTIR space right now. And I mean, look, Vrana wasn't the best with the Capitals, but a lot of that was due to circumstance. A lot of that was due to him not being placed up too high in the lineup. We all kind of knew that he was a talented player over there. He had multiple 20 goal seasons after all, but... It was no secret, Verona was a young player who had some really good goal-scoring potential long-term who might not have been put in the best position. And so, getting traded to Detroit, getting the opportunity in Motown, it was a really good change, and a lot of Red Wings fans embraced the opportunity to give this guy those minutes that he probably deserved. And so, Washington seems like a fit that would be just prime fan service from that general management staff, so who knows if that's going to happen, but either way, talk to the concert thoughts about Jakob Verona, we'll find out all this stuff tomorrow, so no real use in speculating at the moment when... I mean, this guy could go unclaimed and go down to Grand Rapids and just live out the remaining few weeks of January in that system, come back in February with the Red Wings, and then score 20 goals. It's possible if that happens, but there are other perspectives to consider as well, which is kind of why I wanted to make this video in the way that we did. But talk to the comments either way all your thoughts about Jakob Vrana and the situation, not necessarily his play. His performance with the Griffins hasn't really been the best, so I don't really know if that's a fair judgment to make about his overall profile from that sample. And also, I didn't mention this at all, but I guess it's worth noting that he did remove all the Red Wings-related things on his social media feed. If you go to his Instagram, no mention of Detroit. It's all Washington pictures over there. He's still followed by some of the old Red Wings. I mean, Troy Stetcher still follows him. But then again, I mean, social media is social media. I don't really know if that's really the best indicator of whatever is going to come. But either way, talk to the console your thoughts about this Verona situation. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Rolls 99. And bye. <laughs>